Here we go again. I have to pull all of this off and get this sealed back here with some Permatex Black. I looked around on YouTube and I could not find any videos that showed the taking off of this housing. From what I'm seeing, there's a nut here. There must be a stud into the engine block. And the same thing here, which does not make sense. There, you know, you would think there'd be one up, up top here. These are just studs that hold the, the pump on the pump itself so maybe I'll find something as I dig into it but as far as I can see so far it's got this here and this here and that's it for holding it on so let me dive into it and find out if I'm I gotta be wrong it, it, they're really you know, just two bolts holding it on doesn't make any sense. It, it would seem that it would always leak up top here. So there must be something I'm missing, but we'll find out shortly. Oh, that was awful loose. This one was a little tighter, but still not super tight. Oh, I have to take this one off too. This is where the whole thing started when this one started leaking. This whole water pump debacle so I have this nut off and this nut off and I was thinking there needed to be something up higher that needed to come off but I'm not sure how you can see this or not wave my hand behind there you can see daylight all the way down to here and then below it there's not much structure either so basically the housing starts right about here so the two studs might be all it needs let's see what it looks like yeah the, the housing ends right here but the studs way the hell down there i'm wondering if if this okay like a big dummy, I started to, uh, let me show this, where's my screwdriver? I put the screwdriver right here and I gave it a little wiggle and it went tink. That's the exact sound it made. And there we have it. Oh, and it's going all over the floor. This bucket doesn't fit under there. Ah, just one thing after the other with this, but it should come, pretty much come right off now. This, this nut did 
Okay, that's the third nut. That's why. Uh, I think that's related to the very first leak. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the back. It's just got crap remnants of a, of a gasket from ages ago, the original gasket, I'm guessing. I'm sure it was put on with Indian shellac, and it's on there like a rock. So it'll take me a while. i got to clean this up. And I think this is definitely a place for Permatex Black. All right, well, let's get this cleaned up. I really should put something in this hole so I don't, that passageway, so I don't get, uh, don't get garbage in there. Yeah, I'm using a very sharp woodworking, a Robert Sorby chisel to get this off, which means I'm going to have to set up my, I have a real good sharpener for all my woodworking chisels, but it's like everything else, it's not set up yet. All my woodworking stuff has been waiting for a wood shop, which is kind of delayed waiting for the, waiting for the cash to do so, to set one up. this linkage off without too much of a hassle. I really don't want to disassemble the whole tractor again, but this part's going to be hard to get at. I'll try a smaller chisel on there. Yeah, that's working fine. It came off real easy, which is, that's where it was leaking, I was right, right in this area. been nice to do this the first time but I guess live and learn I'll be introducing the farm all a which is directly behind me my nephew was over this last weekend and he was giving me a hand we did some we pulled it out of the weeds where it sat over the winter and uh, him and my brother-in-law gave me a hand working on it for a bit well all weekend and we made a new we made a new uh, wiring harness and some other stuff I'll show you that oh geez I'm getting all kinds of stuff in my bucket of coolant, but it was already a little bit dirty, so I've been have to run it through a strainer. No big deal. Pretty clean. Now I'm going to clean it with some uh, sandpaper. And then I will do the back of the housing itself.
Not sure how well you can hear the wind. I'll show you the trees blowing around a little bit later, but yesterday we had gusts to 60 miles an hour. And it surprisingly didn't do a whole lot of damage. We have everything we have as windproof. Because it's windy up on the ridge and if you don't have things bolted down, they go bye-bye on you. Oh yeah, that's cleaning up real nice. With that uh, shellac, it's kind of hard to tell how much gasket you actually have on something. Because it looks just like metal after it's been on there for a while. But it looks, from the looks of this, what I can see, it has almost nothing on it. Everything appears to have stayed on uh, on the engine block. So my guess is that they they painted that surface with the shellac, stuck the gasket to it, and then put the pump on. That's my guess. And it also appears as though it happened a very long time ago. I don't think this has been been redone in ages, if ever. So if that's true, I'm the first one that this has leaked on since 1951. It's some kind of luck. Yeah, there's a little burr on this. Take that off with a file. Little burr right here. Maybe somebody did take it off, because it kind of looks like it was pried right there. And that's not where I put the, it's not where I put the uh, screwdriver when I took it off. fairly roughly machined but that's what the gasket is for the gasket's supposed to take out that slop okay the permatex uh, gasket maker formulas will absolutely fill the little voids on here I mean you can do that the old timers used to use uh, like a cereal box, cut gaskets out of a cereal box. But then they use shellac on them. Shellac, the shellac is really tough stuff. Hard to get off too. Yeah, the big problem with this whole setup for this alternator is that that top bracket, the top bracket for the alternator kit, 
uses a stud that goes right through this. So that's, you know, it has to be loosened every time you dick around with the, the alternator mount. So, especially with these, with the older uh, gaskets, with uh, a gasket, I guess a gasket uh, shellac is probably what was on here. The gasket shellac hardens and turns like a glue so it can crack and leak. I'm guessing the Permatex is a bit more flexible after it's dried. I'm really hoping so because it will need to be loosened at some point if if I have to mess around with the uh, alternator. I can't get a double nut on there because there's no room. The, the stud would come through right here. There's no room between the stud and the back of the fan. I, there wasn't even enough room to get the nut off. So, whenever this thing is, whenever that bracket uh, nut is loosened, it loosens this joint back, right back here. But there's plenty of, of metal around this, so I'm hoping that a nice layer of Permatex black, a Permatex Ultra Black on there will do the trick. That is about as clean as I'm going to get it. So what I'm going to do now is wipe that down with lacquer thinner, wipe down the mating face on the engine with lacquer thinner, uh, blow out anything from the inside of here, and then I'll start putting Permatex black on here and then let it dry for the hour, or I guess I will put it on the, the engine. Then we'll tighten it up and do this again. So I want to show you this before I start goobering Permatex on here. This is where the stud goes through. This stud right here goes through here. This is where the first leak came out and the second leak came out along the edge here from that same stud. That is the problem because that, that stud is shared by both the pump itself and the pump housing. It's, it's prone to leaking. But what I want to show you is it looks as though the Permatex is still holding quite strong. You know, the pressure from these two and the nature of the Permatex itself appears to be doing the trick. I'm hoping it can do it. This is such a skinny face right here that if it's going to leak, that's where it's going to leak. And this shared stud is is the big culprit but let's cross our fingers and hope the permatex black permatex ultra black let's hope it works um, it doesn't matter if a little bit goobers into the opening right here i don't want much there but i want a good coating of it around this uh water jacket port right here so, I'll get to it.
instructions say to finger tighten, wait one hour, and then come back and torque to specifications. I can't even get in there to finger tighten that without the, without the ratchet, so. Just snug it a little bit. start squeezing out a hair and then all right that's it now one hour and tighten it down okay here we go what I'm gonna do I gotta take this back off get my alternator bracket on Okay, I can see the squeeze out in the back, and so far all looks well. This is the one that is the problem. This nut right there. Hopefully, it can be seen on video if something is squeezing out or not. I'm too busy looking at what I'm doing. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I need to wait 24 hours and then put everything back on. Okay, that'll wrap it up for the, uh, I don't even know what to call this. Uh, this will be the, hi cat. This will be the water pump take two, I guess. Um, so now I've got Permatex on the water pump itself, the water pump housing, which appears to be squeezing out pretty good. Uh, I got a lot of it down here, which I'll cut off with a razor, but it, I don't want it to interfere with my uh, linkage there. That's the, is that the throttle? I believe that's the throttle. So... I'll trim that off tomorrow, but so far so good. It looks like I got a nice clean bead coming out all the way around. And once this Permatex Ultra Black uh, dries completely, it's awful tough stuff. So I have to give it 24 hours. That takes me until tomorrow evening. And as I did with the pump housing, I'm going to let it sit for two days. I got plenty of other stuff to do tomorrow. I have to spray glyphosate and a lot of other stuff that I couldn't do while it was so hot. We had three days in the upper 90s. And one of the days was the highest heat index in years. I think it was 120. Maybe it was 110, but it was the highest in, in a long time. It was just insanely hot. You would just burst out sweating. Well, it was humid, too. You would just burst out sweating just from uh, walking around. So I couldn't get anything done. And we had company, so I couldn't get anything done. 
So I really, really need to get into the vineyard and hedge the vines, and I need to spray glyphosate everywhere before pigweed takes over, and I have to spray 2,4-D. So I'll give this two days. I'll come back, put the radiator back on, which I know how to do really well, and in case you didn't notice, I don't know if anybody noticed or not, I didn't have the shroud on when I put it back on. So if that did not leak, I would still have had to come back and get that shroud on. So this time I had better get the shroud on. Get, put the shroud right here so I, so I remember it. So the shroud needs to go on, the radiator needs to go back on, and I need to filter this garbage. You can see I got, uh, looks like a couple bugs in there, and the darker chunks are the stuff I scraped off of here. I had the bucket under it to catch the leak, but I'm scraping at the same time, so I got chunks of stuff. But this is all fresh antifreeze from when I filled this. So I'm going to strain this back into it and then add whatever I, I need to add. I'll put it on the tester and, and test what it needs. And for now, I'll get this covered up so the cat leaves it alone. And then any little drips down there, I spray that with PB Blaster. And the cats hate that stuff, so they won't even go in the area where the antifreeze dripped if I got a little bit of PB blaster on the floor. So that'll wrap it up for today. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the little bell, which will give you notifications when we upload new videos. And giving us a like would be nice as well. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you next time.